All right, I'm gonna try to make this quick. There, yeah, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. Okay, so there's a video once saved, always saved with Daniel Mesa. I don't remember this video at all. I made a comment three years ago, and then uh, you know the other day, yesterday, apparently CAC 0404. Perhaps he just got out of prison and now has the opportunity to respond to my comment I, I don't get it but whatever all right so I just want to sort of um, roll through this if you will all right so the one thing that stands out to me uh, is that these people that reject the gospel of Jesus Christ they Oh, I didn't see this comment, so I'll read this one with you. All right, so well, let me read this for, oh my goodness sakes. If you quit listening to God, if you quit obeying the Lord, if you quit faithfully following the Lord, then you will not, you cannot be saved. Okay, so basically he's saying that uh, Jesus Christ is a liar and that the grace of God is not sufficient to save anybody. Now, you think about this. Um, I mean, there's so many examples to give. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. It's amazing. Remarkable. Let's do this. Let's see what happens when we type in never thirst okay whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst all right so according to CAC 0404 you will thirst and if you don't keep drinking the water you're gonna die all right think about that I mean that is so stupid it's as if these people have never read the Bible and it goes back to what I keep almost uh, every day I make the point that if you don't have faith then the veil is upon your heart and you will not be able to understand what the Bible says and clearly uh, CAC 0404 is an example of this so let me read this you're not putting too much on the table for me I'm not the one that's confused on the subject you are you don't understand a simple concept in the book of Job, which states the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Again, to suggest that one can never lose their salvation goes against several passages in the Bible and that you're making a conscious effort to ignore scripture to support the false doctrine that Jesus can save you. Read John 10 verses 26 through 29 this is one of my favorite I love this verse because it tells people they're gonna go to hell and they can't be saved this is one of my favorite verses for those like you who would attempt to claim that Jesus can save anybody to prove the false doctrine of uh, Jesus can save you tragically many what does he is this the verse here let me go to it John 10 is that what he's talking about the sheep oh he's is he talking about that 26 through 29 this is odd isn't it okay but believe but ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life right there it's eternal life it Jesus is lying if you can lose your salvation if you have if you can lose your salvation then you can't have eternal life and they shall never perish if you could lose your salvation you would perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand well, Jesus would be lying because you would be plucked out of the Father's hand if you could lose your salvation. My Father 
which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand uh, cats out there are nuts okay so anyways oh, all right Sakes. Okay, so uh, let's read this a little bit. Just one second here. Knock it off. All right, who cares? All right, so the cats are nuts. All right, so surprise, surprise. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so he does quote that. Okay. Hey, and he quotes Snatch. Hey, you know, this is a red flag right there that tells me you don't believe in any Bible at all that's what it tells me you want to dispute that fine let's talk about it but I'm telling you when I see that word used in <laughs> used at all I think snatch there okay that's one one time as unless you're using it for Isaiah 9 all right uh, there's a problem and it's a red flag because that tells me you don't believe in any Bible anywhere on earth at any time you don't believe the Word of God and of course if you don't believe the Bible how, you're not gonna have understanding I mean everything it all makes sense doesn't it now here is what most fail to notice the very promise of eternal security is not con unconditional but conditional those who are given the promise of eternal life are those who hear and follow. Oh, you got to hear. Well, what if you're born deaf? What if you don't have, uh, what if you get in a car accident and you can't walk? What if you're deaf and lame? You can't be saved? What does that even mean? You got to, you got to, stick your ear out and start walking to be saved can you make any sense of that both of these terms are in the present tense and indicate continuing action oh that's a, that's a fancy word for works now this is so obvious man it's mind blowing not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will of my Father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done continuing actions. This passage does not say that all you have to do is to have heard and followed. What? You gotta hear and keep following, apparently. Jesus wants when you got saved and then God will forever save you. What is more, the term for hear means to listen, to hearken. You, you know, I, I've known what the word hear means since I was a little boy. I, I have, you know. I'm not bragging. It just, since I was a little boy, I've known what the word hear means. It's not confusing. It's not hard. This is what discipleship is all about. Well, discipleship is one thing, being saved is another thing. The obedience of faith. In order to be given the promise of eternal assurance, we must continue on in the hearing and obedience of faith. There is no once saved, always saved in this word of the Lord. Eternal life is once saved, always saved. Uh, it's illogical to say you have eternal life right now, but 
you might die if you don't continue to do things that nobody can explain. What I mean, what do I got to do? Really, what do I got to do? You think about Peter. And, and let me just explain it. I mean, if you at this point, if you don't know what's in the Bible, then start reading your Bible. But you know, Peter, he, he said he was never going to deny the Lord. Okay. Now, I'm not going to say a word. All right. Okay, so Peter, uh, you know, let me find the verse here. Maybe I don't know the Bible. Okay. So Matthew 26. Uh, Jesus said, hey, buddy, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. So in Cac's world, if Peter denies Jesus, then Peter's going to lose his salvation. And it wasn't just Peter. It was all the disciples. Alright? Just like what I talked about before. Apostles, disciples, same thing. Alright. So... What happens? Peter denies Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. And then he realized, oh man, Jesus. You know, it, it's incredible. If the law of Moses isn't enough to show you that you're not perfect and that you need a savior, your own life should be enough to show you that you're not perfect and I guarantee you that this phony fraud here cock 0404 he's not perfect either I guarantee it he sins just as much as you and I do guarantee it guarantee it absolutely guarantee this guy is not perfect he cannot save himself and he does not live up to the words that he preaches I mean, I mean, you can't even define. You gotta hear and you gotta follow. What does that mean, really? If you don't hear and you don't follow, you're gonna lose your salvation. <laughs> Think about Peter, man. Think about anytime somebody says ridiculous stuff like that, I immediately think of Peter. Because Peter, he swore up and down, swore up and down that he was going to follow Jesus, though I die with thee, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. He gave Jesus his word, he would not deny him, but he would, he wouldn't deny him to his death, and he swore up and down on it guaranteed it he promised it and then when he was asked uh, hey aren't you a disciple of Jesus then he he began to swear up and down the other way I don't know that guy and there's somewhere in here that says that he was using foul language right there and then he began to curse and swear you know dog damn it I don't know that SOB can leave me alone and then the cop crew. Now he was cursing and swearing, using foul language. And then he remembered, oh, man, busted. Peter didn't lose his salvation. <laughs> and Jesus even says that he never lost his salvation. Uh, what's that verse that I'm thinking of? Uh, was that John? 
ten. Um, let me think here. No, oh, John 17. I'm sorry, way off. See, I need to read the Bible too, right? While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. Speaking of Peter, he kept them. And none of them is lost. Speaking of Peter, Peter is not lost. He was, he was never lost. He never lost his salvation, but the son of perdition. And the son of perdition was never saved, which is Judas, which is the son of Peter, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So he had a purpose. Judas had a purpose. And um, that's why he was never saved. And that's why he was lost. But Peter never lost his salvation. Now, even though he was cursing, swearing, using foul language, and being obnoxious and rude denying the Lord Jesus he still never lost his salvation none of them is lost now uh, once he realized his error it hit him hard didn't it it hit him pretty hard once he realized he made a terrible mistake doesn't mean he lost his salvation. Man, that's like telling one of your children, hey, you're not my son anymore. Or you're not my daughter anymore because you stole my cookie. I mean, come on, man. What how do you get how do you how do you get resaved after being saved? If Jesus couldn't save you, how do you get resaved after being saved and then losing it? I mean, the idea is stupid. And, the, you know, and these well, these people get excited about these claims that they make. They get excited about the idea that people can lose their salvation. Think about that. I get excited when I hear about people being saved, believing in, the G in Jesus Christ, believing in the Bible. I get excited about that. But these people, they get excited when they get to tell people, you're going to hell, you stupid Christians. That's exactly what's going on right here. Alright, so this is all the obedience of faith. Uh -huh. Well, there's faith, and by grace are you saved through faith. And discipleship is about obedience in faith loving one another and letting the scripture and the spirit of God guide you but there's nothing at all in the scripture that says you can lose your salvation and it would be illogical to suggest you could lose your salvation if you have eternal life man it's not a diamond ring it's the Spirit of God inside of you and you are in Jesus you abide in him and he abides in you and nothing can separate us from the love of God nothing in order we must continue on hearing we must you know you better not go deaf you're if you're going deaf you better go see a doctor there is no once saved, always saved. Eternal life is once saved, always saved. There is no difference. In this world of the Lord, such a dogma of once saved, always saved is not taught in Scripture. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? If you quit listening to God, if you quit obeying the Lord, if you quit faithfully following the Lord, then you will not. You cannot be saved, you dumb, stupid Christian. Uh, I'm, really, what can you say to these people? They do not believe in eternity. They don't believe Jesus can save them. And that's clear. They believe they have to save themselves by 
teaching the Word of God, by um, you know casting out devils in the or you know in the name of Jesus, right? And doing many wonderful works. And if you fall out of line with what you know the Bible says right here, prophesying, casting out devils, doing many wonderful works. And if you fall out of line, you're going to lose your salvation. But then Jesus says, I will profess to them, I never knew you. These people, uh, the only qualifications for this is that they taught in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, they done many wonderful works. That's the only qualification here given. And Jesus says, I never knew you. In the name of Jesus. And they called upon the Lord. Lord, Lord. And they did wonderful things. They taught the Bible. They taught. And they cast out devils. And they did many wonderful works. That's the qualifier. So why does Jesus say, I never knew you? It's because they believed that they were saved because of the works that they did. In other words, they rejected the grace of God. It's quite simple. Exactly as CAC 0404 is doing. Rejecting the grace of God. And, you know, it's quite astonishing. Uh, that, uh, uh, I gotta think of the verse here. What is the verse? Well, um, that's not it. I do not frustrate. I'm getting frustrated. I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Alright, so it, to me it's astonishing. Has these people never heard the song Amazing Grace? How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see the words are perfect man now you gotta hate that song if you believe you can lose your salvation if you believe you can lose your salvation then you're not saved at all by your own words by your own words Jesus did not save you and the idea that you can save yourself and good luck and the and, and I just a this will be the third time I've asked this question and you gotta love these guys that they like their own comments you know hey I'm gonna like my own comment make it look like I got people on my side <laughs> you gotta love that right oh, I'm liking what you're saying Mr. CAC 0404 yeah, isn't that a little insecure? Maybe I'm making a big deal out of nothing. But, um, is this the same guy? Alright, so who cares? Is that him? Is that him? Let's see, bald head. You got the beard. Bug guys, no, it's not the same guy, is it? No, he's probably part of that church, but is that even a church? It doesn't matter. 
I mean, obviously this church here has failed this gentleman right here because they're not preaching. They're not uh, preaching the grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now the whole reason why we that are born of the Spirit of God come to God is because we know we can't do it ourselves. We need a Savior. We can't save ourselves. We realize, man, we're just failures. Man, we are failures. And I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm in dire need of help. And the good news is we have somebody there to help us. We have a Savior. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ.